Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. And welcome today to my review of the latest release by what I think is the world's number one micro brand watch company. If you saw the thumbnail, you probably recognize the style. The brand is of course, Zelos. And I make that claim wearing two different hats today. The first as a watch reviewer, the second as a micro brand owner, albeit a fairly recent micro brand owner. I think in many ways, Zelos embodies everything that's right about the direct to market model. They're a small agile company with a seemingly relentless release schedule, an ardent fan base and customer service that's an example to the rest of the industry and they know their market. The brand was built on sub $500 dive watches, but the owner El Shan also knows that there's an appetite, a healthy appetite for premium pieces bearing the Zelos name. From his Mirage Tour Beyond Halo model, through models like the Starfighter, the Sky Raider, to today's watch, the dual time titanium spearfish with a custom module. Now, you don't have to like their designs and you don't have to ever plan on buying or wearing a Zelos, but I think you've got to give them a bit of credit for how they've built their brand, built their business over the last 10 years or so. Hang on. This isn't a review of a watch brand, it's a review of their latest release. And despite my kind words about Zelos, there will be moans, there will be niggles about the watch itself. Quite a few of them today. This is one of their premium offerings, it's definitely not cheap, and with higher price comes higher expectation. So you really have to be into the whole Zelos look to go for this one. But if you do, what are you getting? Let's flip the camera and find out. All right, let's get into it. But before I go on, I'm sure you saw the pop-up. This video is sponsored by Zelos. But like I said, this isn't gonna be a 10 minute love fest. Despite my respect for the brand, I do have some complaints about the watch. So in the interest of even handedness, I'm gonna give you half of them now and half of them later. I'm not gonna complain about the packaging, even though it is a little basic considering the asking price. Cardboard outer and a not particularly luxurious looking or feeling three watch roll. I haven't seen this one before. When you pop it open, one of the slots, the middle slot, is occupied by your new Spearfish Dual Time. That's all fine, but my first complaint of the day is regarding the warranty. I complain about Zelos's warranty every single time I review one of their watches. Look, one year is kind of okay for a $400 NH35 powered diver, but this isn't that. This costs just shy of two grand and is powered by a Salita with a module on top of it. I would be far more comfortable and I'm sure most people buying it would be far more comfortable with at least twice that warranty, if not perhaps a third year to acknowledge just how much you've spent. I guess then we move on to price, that seems logical, and I've dropped a couple of hints, it's not one of their cheaper offerings. This one is 1849 US dollars, regardless of which variant you go for. There are a couple of titanium models on bracelet, or there's a full carbon fiber case version on the strap. In some ways that's a bargain, considering some of the specifications and the unique design. In other ways though, it's a lot of money for a Zelos, so they really have to dot their I's and cross their T's today. Not quite sure why they refer to this one as a diver, when it's clearly nothing of the sort. It's definitely a sports watch. The loom is great and it has plenty of water resistance. The case and bracelet are both made of titanium, coated titanium no less, but it's definitely not a dive watch, is it? This one's party piece is very much about combining Zelos's avant-garde looks, their signature style, if you will, with several unusual complications thanks to a module on top of the excellent Solita SW300 movement. We'll get to all of that in just a second, but first, let's do dimensions. It's a classic 4020, so 40 mil in diameter, 20 mil between the lugs, with a 47 mil lug tip to lug tip. Thickness is 12.6, but Zelos are at pains to tell you that 2.6 of those millimeters come from a piece of vintage style top hat sapphire crystal. Water resistance is 100 meters, thanks in part to a screw down crown. Weight, as sized for my seven inch wrist, is a mere 107 grams. And the movement as noted is an SW300, but with a Techno Time TT651 module on top. You can see the Salita through a display case back. This one is all about complications and tracking multiple time zones, hence the ye olde compass style custom rotor with a part of the world map on it. I recognize the USA and Mediterranean Europe and North Africa on there, at least 
That's what it is if you squint a little bit. The 300 has 25 joules, 42 hours of power reserve, and is a clone of the ETA 2892. These are really good calibers. They're well decorated, they're accurate, they're reliable. If you're gonna stick a module on top of something, then why not stick it on top of an SW300? So then what is going on here? What does this watch do? There is a world map sub register with hour and minute hand at the six, and we have a twin wheel grand date complication underneath the 12. Zero to nine on the right hand wheel, but look at the left hand wheel. Four zeros, two ones, two twos, and two threes. What is going on there? You'll find out in a second or two. So when you unscrew the crown, you'll feel a distinct pop at the first position. And if you roll the crown forward, the watch hand winds as normal. It's a lovely smooth wind from one of these Salitas as well. The fun begins when you pull the crown out to the second position. If you roll the crown forwards, you can see the world map rotating with the hour hand attached to the map. You are thus able to adjust your second time zone. If you roll the crown backwards at this position, you adjust the date and have a look at how it adjusts as I go all the way from one to 31. It's really quite unusual. Both the discs change for the two and then again for the five and the six. Both the discs change again for the 10 and the 11. Both the discs change for the 20 and the 21. And both the discs change for the 30 and the 31. And then one changes for one and then both change for the two. It is fascinating to watch. When you pull the crown out to the third position, the movement hacks and you can adjust the home time with the GMT being slave to the home time, of course. I hope you were following all of that because I'm not gonna explain it again. All right, moving on to the case finish. It's very simple, all brushed titanium with that signature dull gray look that you only get from that particular metal. Both case and bracelet are hardness coated though, so it should stay better looking for longer than most uncoated titanium does. Now you can see that piece of top hat crystal, can't you? It's a 40 mil watch, but the dial is a little bit smaller than that because of a sloping case edge and an angled fixed bezel before you get to the sapphire. Nice lug profile though, this one wears very sweetly. Female end links always really help with wear on smaller wrists. Now this one may be called the Spearfish, but there's a decidedly Seiko Samurai look to those crown guards. Not that that's a bad thing. The signed titanium crown is nicely integrated into the case as a consequence. Overall, not too many bells and whistles, but that is what the dial is for today. And it's a nice bracelet. It's one of those hex oysters, or at least that's what I call them. Three links, small links, and lots of links mean you get a better fit. You get more articulation and more comfort. And it's all very smooth to the touch. Screws hold it all together, and there are quick release spring bars, meaning you can swap it for a strap if you want to, but there's so much comfort here that you probably won't want to. The clasp has a Zelos logo medallion embedded into it. It looks great with multiple finishes. There's a double push button trigger to open the clasp, and I believe the whole clasp is made from titanium as well. It features roughly one centimeter, four positions of on-the-fly adjustability. So small links plus on-the-fly adjustability equals the right fit every single time. Okay, let's get back to the dial. You saw earlier on what the movement does, but let's get in close and have a look at how it is all finished, etc. It's a sapphire dial with the indices and the date frame and the brand logo and the frame around the GMT complication all applied on top of it, allowing you to see the two date discs and a lot of the pearlage work that they've done to the front of the SW300. The indices have high polished beveled edges and are segmented down the middle, allowing them to use two different colors of loom per hour marker. Very nice indeed. I've seen that elsewhere on other Zelos. It's a bit of a signature. The hour hand and minute hand are also semi-skeletonized, again, allowing you to see more of what lies beneath them. And the second hand is a very slender needle with arrowhead tip also full of loom. Now I am not for one minute suggesting that this watch will suit all tastes because it simply won't, but Zelos know their market and they know what their customers want and their customers want designs that they simply cannot buy elsewhere and that more than applies to the Jewel Time Spearfish. And check out how the watch looks after dark. It looks great after dark. The sapphire dial really comes to the party and the world map GMT complication is also fully loomed. 
You remember I said that our markers had two different colours of loom, both clearly visible when you switch the lights out. And if I turn the speed up on all of this, everything remains pretty visible even at the end of my test, including the GMT hands, which if they weren't being fouled by the minute hand, would both still be clearly visible. Like I said, Zelos know their customers and their customers love loom. On wrist, this one wears very nicely. Curved lugs, short lug to lug, female end links, and around 40 grams less weight than you would expect if this one was made of stainless steel instead. Now, some people find titanium watches too light and flimsy feeling. I am not one of those people. I really enjoy the extra all day comfort that you get from a lightweight watch. Having said that, this one still tips the scales at 100 plus grams, so it's not in the featherweight division like some other titanium pieces that I have reviewed. However, because it has a lightweight case, you can hear the movement, you can hear the rotor winding the watch, it's relatively noisy, so bear that in mind if that's something you don't enjoy from your watches. Pocket shot to finish, fully adjustable clasp so you can wear it how you want to, but because it's light, I was tending to wear this one loose. All right, moans and niggles. I said there were a few. I've already talked about the warranty. I think one year is not enough given the module and the relatively high price for the brand. You could buy four average Zelos for the price of this one. Not that there's anything particularly average about a Zelos. I've got a couple of material complaints as well though, including the gap at the upper edge of the clasp. It is, shall we say, sizable. And it's sizable whether the watch is on your wrist or not. It's not quite as noticeable at the bottom end of the clasp, but it's very noticeable at the top end. Now, I reckon it's caused by a relatively thick clasp paired with a relatively thin bracelet. Perhaps they could have looked at putting a smaller, more slender clasp on this one to avoid that big old overhang. The date complication, as fun as it is, it never really looks perfectly aligned from one disc to the other. Some dates are better than others, but none of them are what I would describe as as spot on. And as nice as the perlage etc is from arm's length, it's not perhaps quite as nice under my 2x macro lens. Once you start skeletonizing a watch and you see more of the inner workings of a watch, you see more tiny parts mass produced by machines. Most of them have some evidence of that machining on them. This watch has an optimal viewing distance and I don't think it's under a macro lens or a loop, put it that way. So not entirely moan-free then, Zelos new release watches must carry the weight of expectation that comes with being the latest release from the world's number one micro brand. That weight is even heavier when one of them is a more premium model. But if you like the look, it's one of the soundest financial watch purchasing decisions you will make this side of getting a Rolex at retail. You rarely lose money on one of these, and if you keep it in good shape, quite often it will be worth more in a couple of years time than the price you paid for it. Like I said, despite some shortcomings, still number one. So there you have it. A bit of a tricky one, this one to nail down. On one hand, 1850 US dollars isn't a lot for a watch made of coated titanium with a Salita 300 and a custom module on top. However, on the other hand, it is a lot for a micro brand and the closer you look at this one, the more you see things that you don't really wanna see. But I can only think of maybe one or two other companies where you can buy a watch today for $1,850 and sell it in 12 months time for $1,850, if not more. So that means it's well worth $1,850, right? Well done for making it all the way to the end of the video. You must be a fan of Zelos and their premium offerings. If so, click here or here to see two more. I'll see you again in the next one.